Hi. How you How doing? You doing? Good. I'm finally really connected. Good. This is your first I'm time. You up so late. I know the time difference is crazy. Nah, I'm always up. I'm always up late. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm still. I'm still okay. on Cali time. I, I was living in Cali for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I heard yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's an honor to be here and converse with you today. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you. Look forward to the conversation. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's just go in because I'm going to upload it anyway, and then, you know, we'll get the views. I'm in the car because it's dark and, and, you know, my peoples are sleeping. But, um, you know, I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of battle rap. So so I follow battle rap, and um, and I saw, you know, I'm a fan of, uh, you know, B-Dot. He's one of my favorites. So yeah. I, yeah, I, saw, I saw the video. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the video, and um, it was interesting because it was different. Right, you guys wasn't mm -hmm. really going at each other and stuff. Y'all was talking to each yeah. other, and and it was powerful. And um, you know, I want to say that, you know, your verse, your piece, that shit really touched me. You know. Oh um, man, great too. Word. That's why and, I do um, it. Yeah, and then um, so I, you know, I checked you out. I checked out some of your videos, and and I was like, oh shit, like she's really talking about a lot of stuff. You know, like real stuff. And I wanted to bring you on, so you know I reached out to you, and you know you're here. Um, okay. Are you? But but you're not on the battle rap circuit, right? That's not something you do, do you? <laughs> um, I originally started as So Finesse, and I actually was battling for about uh, seven years. And I'm one of the I'm one of the only female battle rap league owners in the world, and the leading one on the West Coast. What's I run West Coast Elites. West Coast Elites. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, so I've been I've been a queen around the way for a while, but I decided to um kind of switch things up because I'm not really gonna be battle battling anymore because I'm in a, a whole different place, just like spiritually and and I want to have more conversations. And it's not too many um people in general that are doing that in battle rap, and it's no women. So it's just not it's not even it don't inspire me anymore. So got you. Copy. Yeah. No, I feel you. Yeah, that's that's deep though. I didn't know that. All right, that's good. Well, yeah. congratulations on that and your transition. So, real quick, right? Because a lot of the topics that I discuss and talks that I give and workshops that I do, you know, it's centered it's centered around sorry. Um it's centered around, you know, healing and you know, recovery mm -hmm. and stuff like that, relationships, but but mostly metaphysics and spirituality, you know, uh, that's, that's really, that's really where I'm passionate, what I'm passionate about. And, um, so listening to you, go. yeah, yeah, definitely. So <laughs> listening to you, I, it was just resonating with me and I was like, damn, I want to, I want to reach out to her and get her on and, um, you know, just introduce you to my audience and stuff, you know? So, okay. um, can you talk a little bit about your transition? Like, I know that you was in the streets for a little while and stuff. And can you tell me like, yeah how that transition happened with you, the awakening process? Even um, even me changing my name was a part of my transition. Because mm -hmm. um, even with finesse, I dig more into my adolescent state of being where I, you know, I'm just, I guess I could just be pretty straight with everybody. You know, I probably did a little bit of everything, you know, from selling drugs, from just... <sighs> practically almost gang banging, you know what I mean? Like I was just kind of out there kind of lost a little bit and having my son originally is what kind of made me wake up a little bit and kind of change my life and get more serious because I wanted to, I wanted to be an example. I wanted to lead a certain type of lifestyle that not only I could be proud of, but my son could say, okay, that's my mother, you know, and not be out here on no bullshit. But what took me to my next step and really my spiritual growth and really changing as an individual was after um, Young Be The Future passed away, who was my late king, um, he abruptly was killed. Mm. And I started to experience spiritual experiences. I started to, uh, it was like paranormal activity. I'm not even going to front. I had to literally study and learn about my psychic senses because I was experiencing things that I couldn't explain to other people, but it was really happening. So I ended up finding um, a temple 
for African spirituality and African sciences. And when I got there, everything that I was experiencing was completely normal in conversation with them. Mm. They, they explained to me how these, these experiences are natural and how when we are not, uh, or we are not tuned in or we don't have understanding, you know, we get judgment. Because in other forms of religion, they're not teaching us about these things. They're teaching us that we have to go through something else to connect with the spiritual realm. And that's not, that's not it. Mm -hmm. Even in some religion, you know, in a religion, the Bible that, you know, some people follow, it says we are made in God's image. Mm -hmm. But people don't really understand what that means. Mm -hmm. And the power that we possess. And mm -hmm. the being that we actually are. So as devastating as that experience was losing somebody I love that was young, that was out here doing his thing, that was not in the streets, that didn't gangbang. It's, it was the, the, the pushing point for the most miraculous thing that could have ever happened to me because it, it, it pushed me to another level to be the queen and the goddess that I am right now, because it pushed me to be of my roots and to be of, you know, our truth. Because I it was I said was I was experiencing things that I couldn't look past and it was real. So yeah, that's kind of where Sistar comes from. Because um originally I was going by SO Finesse. SO was Sister Outspoken, that was the poet, that was the healer. Because I did um after I had my son, I went straight to college and I got my degree in sports rehabilitation therapy. And I'm also a, I work as a certified massage therapist and a yoga instructor. Mm. So that's what I that's what I do. But um, so that was that's the healer, the mother, the the you know the activist, and then finesse was my still my embodiment of my adolescence, of the things that I saw, the things that I went through. You know, I sold, did drugs. I was out there. I've seen friends get shot, almost got shot, blood splashing on me. I've experienced so much, and that's where I, I would pull from in in that aspect of things. So I kind of just fused it, but now. I'm just at a point to where I'm embodying the next aspect of my life. So I, I just kind of threw all of that out the window and it's just star. You know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like uh, I'm still sister, but I'm a star. Mm -hmm. I am a light. I am a sun in the lives of others. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to chant death and illness mm -hmm. because when you battle rap, when you're practicing your lines, I, like I, it was hard for me because of my spiritual practices, we learn the power of words. We learn manifestation and how when you write something down, that's actually a spell. Like you, that's an actual spell casting when you write something down. You're actually putting it into the universe to come back. And sometimes it's like, like, like when they say like um, ignorance is bliss mm -hmm. because something doesn't have as much power when you're not conscious of it. Mm -hmm. It still holds power and things are happening. But when you're not conscious of it, it is, it's dimmed a little bit. But when you're conscious of it, you, you know what you're doing. So it, it holds more energy and more power. Mm -hmm. So I can't be sitting there talking about killing people that I'm, I'm actually cool with. Mm -hmm. Like, I just can't chant that. So battle rap is not, I'm learning this may not be a lane for me. But it was a beautiful thing when they set up me and beat out because me and beat out, we, they tried to get us to battle over and over again. And we was like, no, and we canceled it because we're really friends and we really didn't want to attack each other because we kind of on the same team as far as our belief systems, what we stand for, how what we push for in the communities and for the people. So it was just, I wouldn't want to tear him down in the eyes of others just for entertainment. But when Dre vicious hit us, hit us up and, you know, told me the whole thing and he was going to propose and he needs us. It was like, if we're going to do it, this is the setting to do it in mm. because it's, it's no other way to end this but in love, mm. you know, but to build him up. And it was hard. I'm sorry, I'm just going on and on. You're going to have no, to ask no, the question. No, 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 that's good. No, no, do your thing. I'm, I'm with you. I was on a journey was, with you right now. Yeah, like the timing was perfect and terrible at the same time. First off, we only had like a week or two to prepare. And I um, I, I recently uh, was a part of a new chapter of the Black Panther Party. 
So with all the riots and all of the things that's been happening right now, it's been a lot of pressure on us to organize and to get things, you know, moving. So my days, besides being a mother and entrepreneur and all of this other shit, a writer, I've been in the in the shadows as an activist, and it's draining. It's 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 drain it's draining and it's heavy on my heart. So when he when I got booked for the battle, it was so hard to write originally, because it's like, how do I channel this energy for this when it's so much going on right now like it's so much going on that is like devastating Mm. and stressful Mm. and it's like a part of me wants to fight a part of me wants to cry and a part of me wants to sit back and just continue to organize so that we can really Mm. be of something and get something done Mm. but then to just come and then just write and to entertain it's like it was like against my spirit almost but at the same time it wasn't, it felt so in line because I knew whatever came out of me and be that mm. was what the people needed. Mm. So I just kind of caved up and channeled a message. And the message was love and unity and building up the black man that they are hunting. And for the black man to know who he is and what he is to us and that we got his back. Woman man is here and we love you. Mm. So that's what that was about. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna tell you that shit. That that shit was so powerful. I, I got like a lot of people are going through a lot of emotional upheavals. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of stillness. A lot, like a lot of distractions are being. Uh, are you are you hearing feedback? Um, it's just like going in and out just a little bit, but it's not bad. I'm hearing you. Maybe it's my. I'm not getting feedback. I'm just like glitching here and there. That's better. Um, I can hear you. All right. So, you know, I talk to a lot of people, and um, it seems like collectively, a lot of people are with a lot of stored trauma. There's a lot of unresolved issues. Sir at the time, a lot of fear, a lot of anger. You you should be talking about it. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. At it's all? messing up. I can't hear you. At all? Um, you, have, you, said, you said something about um, people have a lot of stored trauma and then I, I kind of can't hear you. How about now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so, so collectively it seems like a lot of us are getting in touch with a lot of you know, suppressed emotions, a lot of unresolved mm-hmm. issues, because we're forced to kind of yeah. be with ourselves and be still, you know? I think this is kind of some of the, I mean, I mean, I know a lot of people die in this process, so I want to always be sensitive to that because that's somebody's loved one, you know? But on the, on the flip side of things, this has been amazing. This has been like, I think the world needed this. I'm sorry if people don't agree with that, but that's my personal opinion. I think it was so needed because it was like time stopped for a second. And it, it, it made you, like you said, sit with yourself, deal with yourself. And I saw a lot of people like going through it, you know, like people didn't realize how much they outsource for their happiness and just to get, get through day to day life. Mm. They don't even know who they are. Mm. They don't know what they love, what they like to do. They didn't know what to do with themselves. And, but then I saw people like went through the process, you know, like some people were just scared as hell. What am I going to do? And then they snapped out of it and they started being afraid of or, or looking at what the news was going to tell them to do next. And they started running businesses, finding skills, getting in shape, but spending time with their family. That's what this was supposed to be about. Mm. And if people did not do that, then they have a lot to work on inside. Because, like, if you cannot be happy with yourself and, and, and want to live without somebody telling you what to do every day, then you're not even alive. Mm. You're just like a robot that's waiting for somebody to put something on your screen. 
like and I, I really feel like a lot of people were able to just have that that realization that's right you know like i saw i see a lot of people getting on their health tip getting on their natural tip because a lot of women couldn't get their hair done couldn't get their nails done you know they had to figure it out men learning how to shave and how to cut their own hair like this was good for a lot of people i know that i wasn't even in the best place with my family right before um everything broke out but when you get put in the position cuz i remember at first everything was kind of it was a little scary at first because it was like how far is this going to go you know i really didn't trust i didn't really didn't trust that the people were going to be that um complacent and that just going with it i really expected us to go into martial law a long time ago I thought the people were going to fight it more or, or just go crazy. How they, they were so scared. I thought they were going to go crazy and we're going to go into martial law and be really on shutdown for real, for real. Mm. So I had to make that decision. Like, do I want to just be like in my house with my son or do I want to be there to help my family? So I, me, my sister, my son, we practically had moved in with my parents just to be there for them and make sure they own their shit and everybody brought all of their resources to one place mm. until we realized that it ain't really that serious. And then we went back home. But for, <laughs> but for a couple months, it was a beautiful experience just like appreciating each other, mm. appreciating each other, working together, working out together. We had the uh, Shihan coming and giving us self defense classes. Mm. You know, we getting on our diet. Like, we were working and preparing together for whatever was going to happen. And that made us closer. And this time frame is something that we'll never get back, you know? Because, yeah, they're saying it's going to happen again, but we know it's not that serious. You know what I mean? Like, of course, we should still be training. Of course, we should still be um, preparing and stocking up on stuff. But it's to an extent, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Like we, the time that we got when it first happened, we'll never get again. And during that time, I had the opportunity to grow with my family. Like we, we to learn about gardening, to even want to start my garden, you know, to, to push my businesses, to write, write, write. I'm almost done with two books. Like, I feel like this was your time. Mm. This was everyone's time to dig inside. I came, I came out of this and had a whole new name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A whole new thing. <laughs> that's that. That's but that. Yeah. That's that shift. That's that transition from that old identity, you know, to the new one. You know, that period in between is painful. You know, like that pain brought a lot of purpose to people's lives. You know, and, that, yeah. and that, that's my story. That's been my story countless times. Um, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about your book? I honor that. I honor that. Um, yeah, let's talk about my book. Um, my book is called Life Outspoken of an Urban Suburban Journey. And it's, it's, it's about that. It's about me literally talking about the nitty gritty of my life to give wisdom to others based on my pains, based on my just, just stuff that maybe people wouldn't normally talk about and the things that they would. But coming from a black woman in urban society and the different things that I experienced and my strong belief that if you don't learn a lesson, you'll continue to go through it. So my point is to try to help people heal, know that they're not alone and to help them get through experiences faster. So you don't have to keep going through the same thing and maybe even in hopes not go through some of the things that I went through because you'll get it the first time, you know, Mm -hmm. You, you'll be able to get my lesson and be like, okay, oh, I remember this, you know, from the book and not even handle it a certain way. And it, it'll make your life smoother. Mm. So I really, um, I, I just want to tell my story and relate with people. I just want to be real. You know, I'm, I always try to be an open book because I don't want to get trapped in some box of perfection. Mm. where people expect me to be perfect or without scars or without like mistakes or something. 
because I don't know how big I'm going to make it in this world. And I don't want people to come later and be like, oh, but you was over here. We got a clip of you fighting or we got a clip of this over here. Or I found out that you couldn't go to the jails because you was bringing drugs. Well, you know what? I told you already. So this is who I am. If you want to support this and put money behind it, that's what it is. But this is what you get. Because I've been through some things, and that that's, that fueled my strength. It fueled my character. It fueled my ability to love strongly. Because you don't know how much you can, you can, you you are until you have endured something. And then you still are that and so much more. So I want to give that energy to everyone who has been through anything, mm. you know? And just remind them of how beautiful and how strong and how powerful and how smart you are, no matter where, how far you have, have went or how far you, how bad you have fallen. That's right. At any time. So that's the energy that I like to give out to people. So I never try to be perfect because life isn't perfect. And as an artist and a writer, you cannot be the voice of anybody if you are pretending because life is too real for that. So that's what I expect people to get from my book. Pretty right. much. That's that's one of the things that you know give a little you know a lot of people hope because we we always see the finished product, right? We see mm -hmm. when the person made, but we don't see the process that a lot of us go through to get to where we are, right? In that moment. Right. And and when we and, and, and when we give people because a lot of people think you gotta have it all together to even start. And, and my mm -hmm. message is isn't starting that we get it together. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. and just because we struggle doesn't mean that we're failing. You get what I'm saying? Right. That's the beauty in the story. Like, what got, what got me through, like, some of situations is even, like, I feel like people should study people that they look up to or they admire that's already accomplished the things that they want to accomplish. Because what you'll find is struggle. What you'll find is pain. What you'll find is endurance. Like it was moments where I was just sitting in my car crying, like trying to figure out how I was going to pay my bills and what I was going to do next. And I remember an interview or something um, with Tyler Perry and he was homeless for a long time, living out his car. All he had was his notebooks and stuff to write. And you see where that got him. So I thought about that and I put out my notebook and I started writing and it's therapeutic for me. You know, it, writing has definitely got me through a lot of things. And I, I just want people to find that for themselves. Find what is your therapy that gets you through it all to make your story worth something. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about the success. It's about the story. What's your movie? That's what I tell everybody when they're going through something. I'm like, oh, your movie getting good. Oh, like, because you be like, think like the the slump part or the stuff when stuff just go wrong out of nowhere. It's like, oh, what kind of twist to it? Like, what? Because that's what makes people cry the happy tears with you when you do succeed. If everything is all smooth and your whole movie is just you skipping through the damn field and money coming out of everywhere and just giving to you, laying on the couch, having things brought to you, who wants to watch that movie? <laughs> Don't nobody want to watch that movie? Don't nobody want to read that book? Don't nobody care? Mm. That's not real enough for, for the average person who's going to be going through stuff every day. Like, we, we want to see when you, you couldn't get to the job because you didn't have enough gas. But then something just so happened to happen. And you know, how old oh, you ended up there. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, the journey. The journey is what makes the ending good. You know? And that's what, so yo, that's, that's like, what, I'm, a, I'm a writer as well. And, and, you know, the word journal has the same root word as journey. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you was talking about spelling and, and casting, you know, mm -hmm. spells, cursive, cursing. You know what I'm saying? So that's deep. Um, writing has definitely been one of the most magical tools in my life, especially when I was going through my dark time and going, you know, when I was incarcerated, I did a lot of box time. And writing, writing really saved me. It helped me to get out myself and, and be creative and tap into something. Like you said, I wanted to go back for a second when you was talking about because I've had some deep spiritual experiences 
and, and it was usually during really dark times in my life where I was I got in touch with some stuff, right? And and I shared with few people because, like you said, a lot of people are indoctrinated. They don't understand, come, yeah. And they hear something, and it's like automatically they demonize it. It's they, evil, exactly, exactly. But can you can you can you share a little bit about you know that experience um, and what you went through? Okay, so um, all right, here we go because I'm gonna be specific. I actually have not done this um, or talked this detailed in my actual experiences on any interview yet. So this is the first. Um, the closest that I actually have is if you ever, if any of you ever go on YouTube and look up my poem. Um, my beliefs are treason. It was live on the Hub Radio. So basically, um, when I I've experienced some other spiritual situations when I was really young, like 12, 13, and I kind of blocked it in the back of my mind. Like the very first thing that I experienced, I remember I was wake, I woke up um out of my sleep one time. And it was literally something heavy laying on me, looking at me, like a shadow type figure. And I like freaked and it like shot behind something. And I went to turn on the light and it was like I couldn't find it. It was gone. But I literally felt it on me. But I kind of blocked that out of my mind. Like, okay, maybe I was just kind of still asleep and didn't know it or something like that. But as an adult... I could not block it out. I was having experience. I would be sitting there and I could feel a touch. I would be sitting there and I can, I started to be able to, um, like we have different senses called our clear senses. You know, you have clear audience, you have clear, um, clairvoyance, mm -hmm. you have clear sentence. Yeah. And um, for those of you who don't know, those are your psychic senses that kind of mirror your physical senses, like sight, smell, um, touch, and all of those things. So it's how you actually kind of um, connect to the spiritual realm. So my clairvoyance is very strong. Well, in my dreams, I have had a lot of visitation dreams from deceased people. And I've had a lot of situations talking to ancestors and getting messages for people that might be in a situation that can cause. I have actually had situations where I've saved people's lives. And I've had situations in the earlier stages when I didn't believe in what was happening, where I felt strong that I could have saved somebody's life. So I'm mm -hmm. one of those people that are weird. I'll call you in the middle of the night and you be like, I had this dream, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what it means, but I want to make sure you know just in case, you know, but with him, not only was I having visitation dreams and he was telling me things that would come true, like within days, within weeks, within months, even as the years go on, things are still happening that he was telling me at those times, but I would smell him sometimes. I would know when he was around. Um, sometimes spirits will connect with you through music, through technology, because they can, they can, they can connect with the frequency. Because you might not, they, they operate at a frequency that's where your eyes cannot see them, like your physical eyes, while you're awake sometimes. But they can make themselves like, um, how do I put it? Um, they can make it to where they can communicate with you. But the more conscious you are, the more in tune you are, the more in belief that what's happening is actually happening, the more they will connect with you. And a lot of people are experiencing these things naturally and they're being told that they're, they're experiencing mental illness. Like it's a lot of people out here who have um, like, they're told they're schizophrenic or other things like that. And the first day I went to the spiritual center that I went to, they were talking about that. And they were talking about how, these people, and we still lived back in the day in our tribal, like, you know, essence, those would be our shamans. Those would be the ones that you go to the spiritual realm. Those would be the ones when they show those kind of signs as a child, they go live with the shamans. 
they get taken because they have a gift. But in this day and time, taught that. So if you start to feel like you're hearing something or you're connecting with something, it's automatically seen as evil. And then if you think that you have a problem, then now you're operating at a low vibration. So, <clears throat> so if you're operating at a low vibration, then who you're connecting with is going to be at a low vibration. You're, you are going to be communicating with entities that are operating at a low, low vibration. But if we teach our children, if we teach ourselves and tap into our psychic senses and our spiritual essence, then some of these mental illnesses won't even exist anymore because we will understand exactly what it is and be able to tell the difference between, you know, chemical imbalances and gifts, skills, Very heightened good. senses, Word. you know? So I, I, I went vegan. I was fasting, not on purpose. I was really going through a depression when I was grieving. But I ended up living with a friend because my, my family didn't understand. So I had to get away from my family because they were just on some like, get over it. And for anybody who's ever experienced grief, then you know that it doesn't just turn off like that. So um, I, was, I was staying with one of my friends for a little while. And she's a, she was a vegan chef. So she would make me eat. And it just so happened that I was eating high vibration foods. Um, they would make me go work out. So we would work out together. I was eating enough to live. You know, I wasn't eating just to eat because it tastes good. I was eating to literally live. And I found out that that's how you're supposed to eat. I felt the strongest that I've ever felt in my life while at the same time feeling light and clear. And I had the most spiritual experiences that I've ever had. Like I, it, my senses were heightened. And I really feel like that's how we're supposed to live as beings. Mm. And if we lived like that, it is amazing the things that we would be doing. Like they would for sure be trying to chip us fast if everybody was on that type of tip because they would want us to control us that much faster. They would want to lower our understanding of consciousness and how much we can maneuver and form our realities and our magical. We're literally magical. We have powers. Like, if everybody understood that, this would be crazy. Woo! Yo, that's this would be crazy. powerful. Excuse my language, but damn. You know, I grew up, I grew up in a, um, you know, this Christian background, Pentecostal, Jehovah Witness. It was a lot of conflict. Long story short, I've also experienced presence, you know, these presences, if that's even mm -hmm. a word, right? And yeah. The last time that it, like, really happened to me, I was, I was in the box in prison, and I was really angry. I was, like, in a really rageful place. They gave me, like, 18 months in the box, you know, just very angry and violent. And um, I'm in this cell by myself, and... um. Just, just, you know, when you just like at the, you're just sick of yourself at this point where it's like, mm -hmm. you just drain, like you just, it's just nothing. It's hopelessness is, is, is self, yeah. self pity was real debilitating for me. And, um, this victim mindset and, um, and I remember I was so exhausted. I, I laid down on my bunk and, and I've had these experiences before and mm -hmm. I felt, I felt the weight beginning on the mm -hmm. foot of my bed and then like up my legs and on my back right all the way mm -hmm. and then I couldn't move and I was like paralyzed with fear and then it was whispering in my ear like real fast like it was like I don't know if it was just it was like <laughs> like real fast like probably not even speaking your language I don't even know if it was a language what it was right and I was right. like I snapped out of it and then something told me right grab a pen and I started mm. automatic writing. Like I wrote a letter to myself. And let me tell you something. As I was writing, right, I was saying, mm -hmm. like I was conscious of it, right, of what was happening. Mm -hmm. but it, like I was speaking the background. I was bugging, like, you bugging, you bugging out, right? And then I wrote a word, stop philosophizing, right? And I had never knew that word before. And I was like, you see, you yes, that happened. See, see, that was your that was your clear audience right there. 
Yo, I'm gonna tell it you. It was like right in your ear. Yeah. In my head, mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. you bugging. That's not even a word. And I had this big ass etymological Webster dictionary. You know them big ass dictionaries. Mm -hmm. Remember them shit? Mm -hmm. And it said, "Go ahead, look it up." Yo, I swear to God, I picked up the 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 the, the dictionary, and the first fucking page and the first word that I saw was philosophizing. Right? Yo, my head. Wow. Yo, I started crying. Like I felt spooked mm -hmm. the fuck out, and I could see it right. It was that. That was a deep ass. I had many of those, but that and was nobody can take that from you. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something that you know what you experienced. Like, and it's hard because you can't talk to everybody about that. That's right. Because if they they haven't experienced it, then they just gonna think you was you crazy. You was going through something. Like, okay, you had a moment, but in reality, like you know what you experience so now you know something else is going on <laughs> than what you've been taught or what you can see on a regular basis and you just gotta kind of live with that live and abide with that abide by that that's powerful i'm happy you shared that and i'm gonna tell you something you said about distancing yourself from certain people and energies because mm -hmm. one of one of my biggest challenges is reaching back for people who are not reaching forward Right, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell you, you, you yeah. know, I was talking about the lesson is taught until the lesson is learned. Right, mm -hmm. out of the connections that I've been finding myself making lately are these trauma bonds. Like, all we have in common is the past, right? We don't have. We're not I talked about that on a, on an interview when I was talking about getting over grief and, and, and uh, actually um, abusive relationships. I was talking about abusive relationships and how you, you, you get caught in trauma bonds and things that you went through and you, you shared a pain together, like a highs and lows. So you, that energy, you feel like, like you said, bonded to it. But it has nothing. It is nothing healthy about it. It's not a part of your growth. It takes you to a darker place of your existence. A person that you don't even want to be no more. That's right. And it's like, man, <laughs> you gotta go. It's hard. That's it's hard when you have memories and connections with people. It's hard. It is. It is. It is. And that. And that's. And and that's what. That's been like the message for me. It's like. You know, letting go, letting go of family, letting go of, of, of neighborhoods, you know, letting go of that old identity, you know, and yeah. transitioning, you know, into who we're becoming and who we really are. Um, real quick, we got a few minutes. Um you you had um you was talking about there was some stuff. I've studied a lot of, you know, ancient, you know, mystery schools and stuff. So I'm familiar with the language, right? The word mm -hmm. familiar, by the way, has family in it, right? So anything, when I talk to my people, I'd be like, yo, if it's too familiar and you feel like you know the person right away, that's a red flag right there. You understand? Because, yo, it's like yep. we, keep, we keep trying to recreate these family dynamics and recycle these experiences, these old experiences, because it's familiar to us. It's family, right? We feel this distorted yep. sense of comfort in that pain. Um, mm -hmm. You feel obligated almost. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Survivor's guilt, all that shit. But what I want to ask you is what, for people who are, because a lot of people ask me about, you know, the metaphysical stuff, where could they go, who could they connect with as far as cultivating these spiritual gifts? Because it's more about a practice than it is mm -hmm. about intellectualizing stuff, right? Because we could, we could regurgitate mm -hmm. information, memorize shit, you know, spit that shit, but it's really in the practice that we activate these energy centers and rise, you know, raise our consciousness, right? And tap into that cosmic right. consciousness. So what, what, what school of thought or tradition do you... I would tell people um, right now they can go to a uh, Karas Unity Center. Um, I think it's .com or .net. And they have um, Zoom um, services still and classes every Sunday. So you can start there, and then from there, it's all these other type of seminars and classes and different things that you can um, gravitate to. Spell that? R-A-S-S? Um, K-R-K-R-S-T. Crast. Oh. Unity Center. 
Christ unity. So. It was based on it was based on Christ consciousness, and um, not as in like uh, Jesus per se. But uh, when somebody says Christ consciousness, it's basically um, living a life in a, in a consciousness in the same way, kind of like how Jesus did, you know. Mm. But when, outside of that religion, per se, because they're going to teach you about African spiritual sciences. Okay, that's what it's, that's what it's based on. And then just like a, a lifestyle, a philosophy, a lifestyle. If you want to start somewhere, um, um, the philosophy of living Maat. It's kind of like a basis of how people spiritually live in um, now Valley civilization. Mm. And it's, it's, it's pretty much kind of to the point, you know. And um, you can always uh, also read books on Orishas and um, Ifa, you know, because those are spiritual practices that work. And you'll learn. I'm not going to tell you too much. You'll learn in your own process as you go. And what happens is you naturally relate to things and you naturally see things or feel things happening that are not, you can't deny. Mm. So, and you also start to discover where all the other religions got their understandings from. Mm. So, and I, and that's why I don't diss or put down anybody's religion because at the end of the day, they all hold truth. Rather, who captured it, tainted it, did this and did that. It's not about the differences. It's about the likeliness. Mm. So if you can find the truth in it and the likeliness, then you can evolve. Mm. But I like to touch things in its more pure state. So mm. the deeper you go in, um, in, in religions, when you get into African spirituality, um, even Buddhism, you know, it's, 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 in, it's, it's in a more pure state. It's in a more pure state because things went from Africa to Asia and India. So those those belief systems are are very pure and they get you straight to the point in raising consciousness. Mm. They tell you, you you get to learn why you meditate. Mm. You get to learn what your soul is, how to connect it to it, how what does it mean to be made in God's image? You know what I mean? How to activate that and go straight to source. And to maneuver in this world a certain way to get the most out of it that you were designed to. Because we're all here for different purposes. And it's layers that we have to break off in every lifetime that we come here. And it's different lessons that we're supposed to learn to elevate in the spiritual realm. This is our training ground. Mm. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say too much more. 